Welcome to the NC Spin After Spin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our website. I want to ask you all, what do you wish you had said on last week's show, but you didn't? John Hood, we'll start with you. Tom, we had a spirited exchange on the show about Governor McCrory's position on Syrian refugees and, you know, the propriety of it and the political aspects of it. And something that I wish I'd had a little bit more sense to say better or a little more time is that you can make a good argument well, you can make a good argument very badly. I think the, uh, President Obama reacted to the statement that Governor McCrory and most other governors in the country issued about Syrian refugees. And I think he could have said something like, I understand people's concerns. I understand that the tensions are heightened. I, I recognize the legitimate worries that people have. Uh, he might have even said, you know, we'll have a 30-day or 60-day or 90-day pause, and we'll, we'll go all the way back through our vetting one more time. He could have made an argument about being compassionate and even self-interested to adopt uh, refugees from Syria in a way that would have persuaded people. Instead, he was obviously angry. He was probably tired. He popped off at the mouth. He, he, he was angry. He said that was shameful. He basically called his critics racists and religious bigots. And this is an excellent example of how whatever your argument is, whatever your case is, think before you speak. Because if you express even a view you find to be completely legitimate in a way that is petulant and angry, you will not persuade. You will fail as a leader. And that's what President Obama did on I've this issue. I've always lived my life that way, as you well know. <laughs> Dennis Wicker, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, uh, Tom, you know, we talk a lot about campaign finance reform, and we talk about uh, big money fueling campaigns these days. And I think there was a story last week that just sort of got glossed over. Out of the $176 million that's been raised in the presidential campaign so far this year, only 158 families supply half or over half of that amount of money to these candidates. You know, people really feel disenfranchised when it comes to the political uh, process in this country. And I think the big money is really putting us on a slippery slope in our democracy. And I think we got to do something about it and do something about it now. I, I think disclosure will help do that, uh, solve some of those problems, more disclosure, more sunshine into who's given this money and why. But I think that for 158 families to be supplying over half the funds, half the funds uh, is a, just a red but herring. When, when the Supreme Court handed out Citizens United, they effectively told the Congress to go fix the campaign finance laws, and nothing's been done. Well, I'm not sure Congress can override that decision, Tom, uh, constitutionally. Well, they can change the, the campaign finance laws. Well, I laws. think they, what they can do is they can start trying to strengthen disclosure and, and go into the area of disclosure. And this is something that we really need to do because this money is turning people completely off to the political process, and that's a dangerous situation we find ourselves well, in. Well, and those 158 families win. In that oh, absolutely. Reason. That's scary. Gene, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, Tom, the public school forum has started a 16th study group, uh, and they have just started it, to focus on what it would take for every child in North Carolina to receive a sound, basic education. Uh, the study is going to use researchers, uh, public leaders, um, the uh, p political leaders also to see if they can arrive at answers. And they're going to focus on racial issues, on whether uh, the impact that trauma has on the education process and on low performance schools. In addition, they're working now on the top 10 education issues facing North Carolina today. They do that every year. Yes, and, and in fact, they'll, they'll have it good. January the 19th for the eggs and issues, which I hope you will be participating we in We are participating Great. in that. Great, good. Yeah, no question. Good, good comment. What do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, we talked about the story about Speaker Moore's uh, campaign finance reports, and I think one of the ways he could sort of uh, come out of this looking better is to do something that should have been done a long time ago. The Democrats uh, have underfunded the State Board of Elections. The Republicans have underfunded it. If we're going to have confidence in our political system, we need uh, more staff over there to post reports, to audit reports, to make sure that we know where all the money is being, how it's being contributed, what the occupations are, uh, how the money is being spent, to literally live up to the letter of the law. It goes back to Dennis's thing about disclosure. 
disclosure. That's one state agency that I think needs significantly more staffing to make sure we all we have the most transparent government. They came we can under have. a little bit of criticism about why it took them so long to do this audit, and they reported that there are six thousand campaign finance reports they have to review. That's, uh, they're, right, there are they're, they're, they're several cycles behind in, in many cases, and that's just not acceptable if we're trying to have, run a transparent government. Well, thanks for watching the Afterspin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.